Hi, my name's Joe Anderson with Reliability X, and today um, I want to seek some engagement. So if you would, by starting, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we're, we're seeking active engagement. What I want to do is I want to start to test the industry a little bit and the way that we use language, and uh, I want to kind of go through my interpretation of things. Again, this is open to criticism. It's open to feedback. Um, we're looking for engagement, just some ideas uh, to try to at least set um, some simpler definitions and explain things, uh, given that I see a lot now in industry, there's a lot of confusion around terms, and a lot of it has to do with the way we use the language or the way that we describe something. And so I want to start by talking about PM and PM programs and how they break down um, and get into some of the certain tasks and where they fit and those types of things. Then we'll touch on, on the corrective maintenance bucket. So again, we're looking for active feedback. Um, we'd be more than happy to have you guys engage with us in, on this process. Uh, so today I want to start with this graphic. So it breaks down to the point to where there's basically eight PM types. Um, if you want to think of it that way, or categories of PM. And then within those categories, where things set. And I want to try to redefine some of the terminologies we use to get out of some of the confusion that we see. Um, so if you would, bear with me as, as we go through this. So here we go. We're going to start with calibrations first. Okay, so PM is the big blanket of the program. Those are all the activities we do to prevent defects from occurring within our system or to go out and try to find defects to stay on top of things, right? And so PM is the overall bucket. Now what we see a lot of time is people say, well, I'm going to do my PMs, but what does that really mean? What PM types are you doing based on your strategy to address certain things? So within that umbrella of PM, the first PM type that I want to talk about is calibration. Now, calibrations a lot of times is industry specific. For example, pharma will have its own calibration department um, doing a lot of things around calibrations where food and beverage, um, you know, we might calibrate a scale, but <laughs> there's not a lot around it outside of quality uh, management's ability to ensure calibration on check wares or x-rays once a year. So they have a uh, outside contractor will come in and do the service. So it's a little bit different. Um, but if calibrations applies to you in that aspect, this is a PM type. So for pharma, uh, especially calibrations would be your first PM type. And within calibrations, you either do failure finding tasks or you're doing risk mitigation tasks. So failure finding tasks would be your scheduled tasks to go out and calibrate something where risk mitigation could be, say, a double check before you run a batch of product just to ensure everything's calibrated correctly so you don't ruin that batch of product. And so those would be kind of the two tasks that you would do under calibration. They typically fall in one of those two uh, task types. Okay, And then the next one is testing. So testing is a lot like calibration. So you have failure finding tasks and you have risk mitigation tests. For example, um, checking emergency lights. Okay, ensuring that you're trying, that's a failure finding test to ensure that when you need them, they will all work, right? And so that would be a testing thing. Another uh, idea of testing would say, uh, testing all the e-stops down the line to ensure that they all work properly. Um, that's more, that's not only a failure finding test, but it's a risk mitigation test, given the fact that you could be running, you pull on the cord and nothing happens when somebody's arm's stuck in a machine. Um, so you got a little bit of both there. That would be your testing uh, PM type. Next is adjustments. And so adjustments, this isn't going out really in, because I got called to a machine to make an adjustment, um, due to a lack of operator training or a lack of center lines. This isn't what this is talking about. This is more adjustments, whether it's seasonal. So it could be switching uh, crack heater units from winter to summer. 
that would be an adjustment PM. It's a seasonal uh, task. Or say uh, size or product changes, those things that maintenance does do, say during a changeover, um, those would be an adjustment PM type. Um, and I'm sure there's a few more, but again, that's where we're looking for feedback. Let's see what fits under this PM type and see if we can't define it uh, better. The next is lubrication. So within lubrication, you have precision lubrication, which is what we should be doing to A and B ranked assets. And then um, we could also get rid of the manual piece of the lubrication with auto lubers or single point lubrication. So with those tasks, it might be going out and checking battery packs and cups once a year. That would be the type of task um, that you would do under lubrication. Okay, so again, lubrication, it's a massive genre, but really it comes down to basically two tasks. You're either manually lubricating or you're auto luber uh, to some aspect and precision lubrication would be the best practice. Okay, the next would be rebuilds and overhauls. And so the way that I've always been trained, um, and right, wrong, or indifferent is that rebuilds would be if you get a big kit of parts, a rebuild would be replace the components that are worn, where an overhaul would be replace all the components no matter the condition, right? So, and then you have a refurbish uh, task and you have a cleaning task when it comes to rebuilds and overhauls, okay? And so that would be pretty much it for rebuilds and overhauls. The next is recommissioning. So recommissioning is any time we lock out a piece of equipment and bring it back up. Okay, Commissioning, by definition, is when we first start a line. That's engineering standard. right? As we commission the line, we're bringing it into service. Recommissioning means that we've locked it out, we've de-energized it, and now we're bringing it back into service. This is where we do a lot of our precision maintenance tests. This is where you do you know, your laser alignment tasks, those types of things that require precision maintenance to recommission a machine, whether we're replacing a failed pump, for example, or we just want to double check um, to ensure that our alignment is, is within specification. Okay, so that would be a recommissioning type with precision maintenance being the task. The next is condition-based inspection. So I want to preface this before we get into the next two is I would challenge the industry to change the language, okay? What we typically talk about is condition-based maintenance and time-based maintenance. And uh, there is a lot of confusion around, especially time-based maintenance. And I would say we get rid of the terms to get all together, but that's going to be a hard thing to do now that it's completely ingrained into the industry. But I would change the terms to time-based inspection and time-based replacement. Okay, so time-based and uh, condition-based inspection is a PM type. This is where you will utilize things like PDM technology, your infrared, your vibration, your oil analysis, right? Um, those technologies, or you could be doing some sort of condition monitoring, IOT stuff, sensors, AI, any of that type of stuff. You also have under condition-based uh, inspection, things like defined measurement. You can define how much backlash is allowable in a gearbox given a gear size, and you can measure that, right? Or you can use calipers to measure wear of certain things. So that would be defi a defined measurement program, which is condition-based, but it's not PDM. And so what I would say is PDM sits within the bucket of condition-based inspection, right? But, and then condition-based inspection sits in the bigger bucket of PM. So it's all PM when we're talking, but PDM is specifically certain technology. And then you have performance testing. And, you know, this comes at a lot of times at startup or at a recommission testing, you know, the performance of the machine. Okay, so all that would be based on condition. Now, where a lot of the confusion comes in is with time-based maintenance. Because we define, a lot of people define time-based maintenance as 
any maintenance we do on a set frequency, whether it's duty, cycle, calendar, blah, blah, blah. But by that definition, everything we do in maintenance would be time-based maintenance, right? But we try to separate condition-based maintenance and say, well, we're assessing condition. Well, yeah, but I'm assessing condition at a frequency. Every month I'm running my PDM routes. So by the definition that a lot of people set forth with time-based maintenance, condition-based maintenance would be time-based maintenance. And that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. The way that I see time-based maintenance would be time-based replacement. And these things are consumables, typically consumables. Um, and sometimes it becomes replacements because we haven't identified a root cause. So I'll explain that in a second. But consumables like filters on my HVAC units, I should replace those, say, every quarter, right? I'm throwing them away. It's not rebuildable, okay? I'm just throwing those things away. Oil filters, right? Canister type filters where we, they're single use, you throw them away. Those things would be time-based replacement. What I find a lot though, is because we haven't solutioned root causes, we put a PM in place to replace certain components to mitigate failure. I would say that's a temporarily good thing to do, but what ends up happening is it becomes permanent. For example, one of the places I worked would replace the veins in the dry vein vacuum pump every three months. And the reason they do that is because around the three and a half, four year mark, the veins would break and fill. And so for seven years, for three months, every three months, they would go out and replace these veins religiously and said, see, look, it works. The pump isn't failing anymore which is great, that would be considered a time-based replacement. But the problem with that is, is we haven't got to the root cause of the problem. So we did a little digging around and we found out that seven years prior, the vacuum pump had failed and they replaced it. They didn't have the right one. So they put an undersized pump in its place and then it worked. And they said, see, it works great. And then three months later, they shelled the veins in the vacuum pump. And so from that point forward, they put a PM in place to replace the veins in the vacuum pump. Well, the problem with that is, is yeah, it's great. You did a time-based replacement. You're not seeing the vacuum pump fail, but we never corrected the root cause. So what we did is ordered the right vacuum pump, put the right vacuum pump in place and let it run and got rid of that time-based replacement. And so there's, there's good and bad to it. Um, as long as it's utilized properly as a part of your strategy, it should be good to go. So that's time-based replacement. Now, let's talk about the corrective side. So again, we covered PM fairly quickly, right? Again, we're looking for feedback, but fairly quickly on the PM side, let's talk about the corrective side now. When it comes to corrective maintenance, there's basically two types. There's planned corrective and unplanned corrective. And under planned corrective, you either have defect, restoration, or run to failure. Up here, run to failure was a business decision we made based off of our criticality analysis and all the variables we took into consideration to decide to run our bottom assets to failure. So it's okay if we run it to failure. It was a business decision. That was planned to fail. We knew it was going to fail. We, our decision was to run it to failure. So we'll go replace the V-belts or the motor or whatever whenever it fails. Okay, so there's planned. And then we have unplanned, which leads to two things, either breakdown maintenance or run to failure. So reactive run to failure means that we got caught with our pants down and something failed and now we don't have parts, we don't have anything. We've got to rush parts in, all that type of stuff. That's unplanned run to failure. Breakdown maintenance, the only difference is, is we actually stock parts for this machine so we can go out and replace the component and get the machine back up and running. So that would be the difference between breakdown maintenance and run to failure in the unplanned bucket. But really it's one of those two tasks when it comes to maintenance. So overall, that's uh, you know the way that I define things. Again, let me know if I'm wrong or if we wanna have a discussion or if there's anything I missed maybe that I need to add. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more we could add to it, but we're looking forward to your feedback. So like, subscribe, um, again, give us feedback, engage in the conversation. 
and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.